use to justify eating whatever I wanted to eat. And now that I'm in tour and trying to follow tour and not, and, and anti Levitical diet, I'm get, I've gotten a lot of backlash from friends and family members and using the same verses that I used to use to justify it. And now I've had to look at those verses again to see what they really say. Um, and to have, be able to defend my faith. So what, I'm, what I, I want to do is, I want to address those verses and, and give you guys some <coughs> arrows to defend yourself. Roger, would you mind saying a word of prayer for the sure. course, please? <coughs> Our Father, we are in heaven, we're thankful for this spot, we're thankful for our family here, we're thankful for the privilege and the opportunity to gather together to study your word and to learn all that you have for us. Uh, we're thankful for Brother Ricky, and we ask that you grant him the words to speak to us that we need to hear, that will encourage us. Help us to defend our faith and to uh, show to others the uh, reality of, of being obedient to you in all things. Be with your people where they are today. And we call upon your name. Grant each one special blessing. Be careful. We all the share with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so what are some of the verses that you guys? That, that stand out to you guys, that you guys have been hit with or asked about, questions about, what about this, what about that? Is, in, is there a particular one? Peter's vision. Acts 10, yeah, okay. That's in Acts 10. It was that a couple of times. Did you have, did you have a response to that? Yeah, if you actually finish reading it, you, you'll know what it actually I've told him so many times, read the whole thing. You can't pick and choose verses without reading all of it so that you know what context it's in. Because if you just pick one verse out of it, you're going to mess the context all up. Don't cherry pick. Take one verse yeah. out of context. You can make it say what you want it to say. And I was, I was guilty of that. I was looking for, I was trying to justify it. So I was trying to make it say what I wanted it to say. One of the ones I, we'll get to Acts 10. Look. One of the main ones I I used to use a lot is Romans 14. 14, 14. If we, want, if we can bring that, that up, Romans 14. And I'm going to be using the King James Bible mostly, but I will show you some differences in some scriptures in other versions. Uh, verse 14, it says, I'm... I know and am persuaded by the Master Yeshua that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that is clean to anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Does anybody else have a different version that said anything else there other than the word unclean? Okay. If we look at the... That's what it says in English, right? So in English it kind of sounds like let your conscience be your guide. If you think it's unclean, then it's unclean. But if you think it's clean, it's clean. That's what it sounds like in English if you just take that one verse out of context. Well, what's it say in Greek? You've got to get to the Greek. Can you look that up? Well, the Greek word is, the Greek number is 2839. And it is koinos. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's all Greek to me. The only Greek, <laughs> the only Greek I know is Maloma. And Koinos or Koinu, there's two different versions of it, 2839 and 2840. To me, it's translated as being shared by all or several, common. Okay, only two other places, only two places in the New Testament is it referred to as unclean, and that's here in Romans 14. Ricky, you ask if any other versions have a different word, and the scripture uses common. That's why I wanted to know, is if the scriptures had fixed that there. Because 
Does anybody have a King James Bible? One of these like, like this? Okay, I don't know if y'all can see, y'all definitely can't see this. But even in the King James here, I got a note. Right here it says, it gives you a little note. And it says, see the margin? And in the margin, it says GR for Greek, and then it says common. So, he's, even the writers here knew, or the translators or whatever, knew that this was wrong and they put a note there. When you, when you go back to Peter's vision, and we look at what Peter says, what he says to, he says, Master, Master, not so, for I've never eaten anything common or unclean. He uses that word common here, he uses that word cornos there, and unclean he uses the word akonthetos, and that's G169. So we've got two words, Com unclean is G169, and it's a it's a carpetos or something like that. I can't can't spell it, but and then the other one is common and it's G twenty eight thirty nine. And in Romans fourteen fourteen, they use this word right here twenty eight thirty nine. If we look at that, we take that 2839 in Greek, and we're going to look and see where else that's used. We get to Acts 10, where P Peter's vision. 10 what? What is it? 14. 14. 10, 14. Yeah. But let's back up a little bit. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to read the whole 1 through 14 here. And if I'm going too fast for anybody, you can just raise your hand, slow me down, because I've just got a lot, of, a lot of scriptures to go through. And I may not get to every one of them today, so if you think of one, let me know. Okay, the, Acts 10, 1. And this is, about, this is about 11 or 12 years after the Messiah's death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Mind you, a decade has gone by. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. A devout man, and one that feared Yah with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to Yah always. He saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of Yah coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius? And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Master? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before Elohim. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter, or Keeper, right? Okay. He lodges with one Simon, a, tan a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou ought to do. And when the angel which spoke to Cornelius with, has departed, he called two of his household servants, and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. So it's about noon. The sixth hour is about noontime. Lunch. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheep knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. This great sheet with the four corners, it was the common pagan practices of the period to use the, the sheet with the four corners to do their sacrifices. So all those creepy crawly things that come down on that, this, this was the pagan practice at the time. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him 
Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No, not so, Master, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Now we have both these words here in the same, same verse. And we've got to go back to what's called the law of precedence. How was, the, how was that word first used? In Romans 14, 14, when they use the word koinos here, I'm probably writing it wrong, it's like this, koinos, and translated as unclean, well, this is after Acts. We go back to Acts because this is, before it. I mean, it's, it's before it chronologically and, and in the scriptures. So why, why did it get changed later? Why is it only translated as unclean here in these, this one verse? And then we look at that word unclean a little closer. It's Kabartos. Uh, and it means impure, foul, unclean. This is, this is what Peter's saying when he says, I have never eaten anything common or, this should probably say and, because when they say or, people are looking at as common or unclean as a comparison. But he's not compares, comparing the two words. He's using two different, two different words. So he's never eaten anything common or anything that was biblically unclean according to the Levitical diet. So what makes something common? Okay, it could be the way it was killed. Uh, or go ahead. It could be a. Um like you were saying, the four corners of the sheet or whatever, it's laying on that. Could make it common. Just touching something that you would consider, like, and I think it was him telling him about going into uh, Cornel Cornelius' place as well, because that they didn't do that. That was, they were. Right, let's read the rest of the story as she, uh, as she pointed out earlier. That was her response. Read the whole thing. So where was I at? Verse 14, Peter said, No, not so, Master, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spoke to him again the second time, What Yah has cleansed, that call not thou common. The word common again. This is not the word unclean. I've heard, it, I've heard people say that which Yah has made, or God has clean, call no man unclean. But it's, it's not what it says. It says, what he has cleansed, call not thou common, which is the word koinos, not akarthatos. Akarthatos is, is the abominable, unclean, foul, impure. Verse 16, this was done three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what his vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. And while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men, which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore you are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that fears Yah, and one of good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned from Elohim by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words from you. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with him, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after, they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met, met him, and fell down at his feet, and worshipped him. 
But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he walked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, You know how that it is unlawful, an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. All right, here's the kicker right here is to me, verse at the end of 28. For Elohim has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. This is talking about the three Gentiles who was coming to him. That the men are not to be considered unclean. That he can take, he, he's to take the gospel to the Gentiles here. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying as soon as I was, as soon as I was sent for. I asked therefore, I asked for, for what intent you have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour. At the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are in, the, in remembrance of the sight of, of Elohim. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a Tanner, by the seaside. Who, when he comes, shall speak unto you. Immediately, therefore, I sent to you, and you have well done that you are our come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before Elohim to hear all things that are commanded thee of, of God. And Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that Elohim is no respecter of persons. Peter didn't want to go to the Gentiles. All right. But in every nation, he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. The words which Elohim sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Yeshua Messiah, he is master of all. That what I say you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Okay, if we could go back to Romans 14 real quick, because when it starts out, he's talking about him that is weak in the faith, receive you, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believes that he may eat all things, another who is weak eats herbs. This is not a dispute, they're not having a dispute here about whether or not you can eat meat. It's about whether or not, or whether or not you can eat certain meats. They're disputing whether or not you can eat meat at all. Any, type, any types of meat. There, some people think you should be a vegetarian. It's 14 what? 14 to there. Okay, this, that goes back before the flood. We weren't given meat until after the flood, honestly, if, if I'm correct there. And Daniel. When you go back to Daniel's diet, uh, and early in Daniel, he, was, he said, no, don't feed me that. Give me just the herbs. And, and he prospered after 10 days. He looked better than the rest of but if you are to eat meat, we're to, we're to eat the ones which Yahweh has laid out and said these are okay and these are not okay. And another verse, uh, we're going to look at Timothy. 1 Timothy 4, verse 4 is another one that I myself have used. just your prayer. It's also the word of, of, of Yah. And his word has already described what is food. Okay. Yes, all foods are clean, but what is food? Who, de who determines what food is? The FDA? Or, the, or our Heavenly Father? I'm going to err on the side of caution. And I'm, I've, I've given up the swine and the catfish and the shrimp. <laughs> Which you, you can substitute with chicken, you know. You, 
<laughs> but the scripture says this that for it's set apart by the word of Elohim. Set apart by the word. In, in that version, okay, yes, it says it is set apart by the word. These are the ones who, that are set aside that you, you can partake of. And if you just take that one verse by itself, it does, it does sound like, but here's the thing he's quoting. He's quoting Deuteronomy. If you go back to Deuteronomy 12, and it actually, there might be a reference to 8, but one verse here out of context and it kind of looks like the same thing notwithstanding you may kill and eat flesh in all your gates whatsoever your soul lusts after according to the blessing of Yahweh okay, that's the kicker there according to the blessing of Yahweh because if not if we just stop there and say whatsoever your soul lusts after well that means you know if you want to eat rabbit eat rabbit right but no, according to the blessing of Yahweh. And if we look, go just two chapters over here, 13 and 14. Over to 14, he gives us the definitions of what we can and can't eat. And clean and unclean animals in Deuteronomy 14. So is Moses saying, you can eat whatever you want here? No, he's saying, you can eat whatever you want as long as Yahweh has, is one of the approved meats. We're not saying you can't eat any meat, you're saying you can't eat the ones that he said you can't eat, like the swine. That's 13 what? 14. It's 14. 14. Skip over 13. And, and, so it's just one more chapter. Yeah. 14 what? 14 one up third. Pretty much all of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. What would be, what would be considered uh, uh, approved by Yah, but No, right there he's talking about the unclean people can eat of it, like at uh, Tabernacle. Um, okay, you got to be clean to eat the Passover. Okay. And what makes somebody unclean? Well, uh, lots of things. Uh, huh? Touching a dead person. A woman's yeah. cycle. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Peter had a, as we read the, the New Testament, we find Peter in all kinds of trouble about this issue. And Peter wanted, even though this went, I believe he went through this, he still thought, I have a possibility of me becoming up clean if I even shake the hand of a man that's in court. Or in and a lot of the, the Jews are rabbinical about that, won't even ride the bus because they're afraid they're going to sit in a seat that some menstruating woman had been sitting in. You've got a good story about that, don't you? Yes, Jacob. Yeah, one of the uh, things we found studying this topic, especially with Peter's dreams, was uh, Hosea chapter 2, verse 18. Hosea kind of prophesies this exact dream because he always talking about making a covenant with the people who were not his people. You know, the people who get cut off. So verse 18, it says, In that day I shall make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and the birds of heaven and with the creeping creatures on the ground. When bow and sword and battle I break from the earth, and I shall make them lie down in safety. So this chapter is talking about bringing his people back into the covenant. And so this is kind of a prophecy of Peter's dream. Because that's exactly what Peter saw. The creeping crawl, yeah. Everybody get that? That, that reference is uh, Hosea 2, verse 18, and it's making reference to the creeping things of the ground. Okay, the beast of the field and the... All right, another thing. This was, Peter's vision was like about an, over a decade after the Messiah, his death, burial, and resurrection. Another verse that I have used... <laughs> I'm guilty of you is 
It's not what goes into a man that makes him, that defiles him or makes him unclean, but what rather comes out, out of him. In Mark chapter 7, this is where we find that. And he's, if we take that out of context, we've got to look at the subject matter. What is he talking about there? The question is not a matter of whether or not you can eat certain foods. The question there is a matter of eating with dirty hands, which is unsanitary maybe, but what does the Messiah say? He says, is it not a sin to eat with unclean hands or unwashed hands? And then he goes in to rebuke them about their traditions and such. But if we look, I want to look at Mark 7, verse 19 and 20. Right here. Okay, right in here. Because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach. Okay, it's not what goes into a man that defiles him, but what comes out of him. Because it doesn't enter his heart, but his stomach, and is eliminated, thus purging all food. And he said, is that, he said what comes out of a man, that defiles him. Now, in other versions, isn't that talking though about what defiles a man and what comes out of his mouth, out of what he speaks? Does yeah, Jordan has talked to y'all about the fruits of our lips, the bulls of our, the calves of our lips. Yeah, it's what we say, the things we say, and you know, I could teach a whole other class on on the tongue. I just can't control it. Right. Let's look at another version here because there are some corrupt versions out there who have added another sentence right there behind that. In, in the NIV, can you switch over to the NIV? Well, check the ESV. It's just as corrupt. Okay, going down to 19 or 20. There it is. And the NIV says it adds it too. You see, they got it in parentheses though. What's the, they put it in parentheses. I don't know. It's a parenthetical statement, but it's not. It's not there in Greek. What's the statement? I can't read it. It says. Thus de he declared all foods clean. Yeah, it says, since it enters not in his heart, but in his stomach, and it is expelled. Now the, the, king, the, the NIV right there says, thus Jesus declared all foods, he said, thus he said, declaring all foods clean. And the ESV has, thus he declared all foods clean. They added it. One thing uh, on that sentence there, they kind of bit themselves in the rear end because the word they chose for Foods. It's Greek 10:33, and it and it means food as defined by Levitical law. Really. So does he have they the, kind of they're they're skewing things and making it seem something. Different. That goes back to what is food? Who That's determines what food is? The FDA or the Father? Right. And that what what's the Greek word on that? 10:33. Uh, yeah, broma is the word. Okay. What? Well, what verse is that in? That one, uh, 719. Uh, so when they added it, when they added the, the words there, they, they added that Greek word, a broma for food. And so it's it's linked to food as defined by the court. They went ahead and did the Greek anyway, even though it's not in the Greek manuscript? It's, it's in Strong's right there. So. But it's not in any of the old Greek manuscripts? Probably not. That's why they... It, it is, that's why they put it in parentheses, because they added it. And if, is, it, is it that verse? Because it says purging all meat in the King James Version. I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure exactly where it is, but it says it goes in and then it purges all meat. And that meat. Is yeah, and then it says period. And then there's, that parenthetical statement is, is not there in the King James or, or the New King James or the Scriptures. Is it there in the Scriptures? And this is while Messiah was still alive and well and preaching. So if, if indeed he did make them all clean right there, then why is Peter tripping in Acts 10? There's scriptures. Why, why is Peter, why, why did it bother Peter then if this is 10 years later 
If ten years before, if Messiah had actually made things clean, it shouldn't have bothered Peter one bit ten years later. That verse was not there. Or that, that little snippet to that verse was not there. Um, where's the rest of my notes? Okay, also, if he did, let's look at Revelation 18. Talking about unclean animals still. If, if he did away with the discernment, having discernment between clean and unclean, why is it mentioned in Revelation 18? Um, two, I think. Yeah. 18.2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hateful bird. And that word unclean there is the G169. Anywhere in, in here where it says unclean, it's using G169 at Harpatos, except for in Romans 14. Except there. The Romans 14 should be translated as common, because it's this word. And everywhere else, this word is translated as common. To have things in common, to all have, they had one thing, they had all things in common. Koinos. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, probably not. And since I've been trying to keep Torah, when I, way back when I start, very first started giving up the, sticking with the dietary laws, um, I started to get healthier. The, this is a testimony. I went to the dentist just before, right as I had started eating clean every day. Used to, I was in baby steps. <laughs> Okay, um, it's Saturday, you know, so hold the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I'm coming out of Babylon slowly. I, this temple's still under construction. You know, I'm, I'm try, I was trying the best I could at the time with what I had, and I was struggling with these verses. And so I thought, oh, well, I err on the side of caution. It's, it's Shabbat, I'm not going to. You're not laughing at you, we're laughing with you. Thank you. Right. All right, well, I'd gone to the dentist and I had, they rate you on a level one to five on plaque and gingivitis and, and your likeliness, how, your risk, your, they give you a risk assessment. I was a level five by being the highest of, of having periodontal and gingivitis and stuff. I started keeping the, the dietary laws strictly, more, a lot more strict. You know, I, I still didn't know about the the lard and the refried beans and the marshmallows and you know stuff we learn about later you know um, but I cut out the obvious stuff you know like I didn't know about jello for a long time either y'all know that jello's got yeah see they, they stick that in, in everything they, they just throw throw a little bit in there it doesn't mean throw it in everything well I went back seven months later I know you're supposed to go back six months, but I always, I'm a procrastinator, so I always call and reschedule and get another month. So just seven months later, I had gone from a level five to a level one. And I didn't change the way I brushed my teeth, or I didn't change my oral hygiene. I didn't change anything like that. It was, I, the only thing I changed really was my diet. Yeah, I might have started stretching and walking more and stuff. I'm trying to be healthier, but I attributed to cut, to eat and, eat and clean. And there's a verse in, there's two verses in Exodus. Um, chapter 23 or chapter 15, it's in both of them. 15 is what, the Song of Moses. Exodus. Yeah, 15, 
Can you read that? Okay. And he said, If you diligently obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim, and do what is right in his eyes, and shall listen to his commands, and shall guard all his laws, I shall bring on you none of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. For I am Yahweh who heals you. By keeping his diet, you know, I started to, to heal. Your body is, a, is an amazing thing. It will heal itself if you keep his commandments. Um, that's not to say, though, we won't still get sick. You know, the sniffles and cold and allergies. And I, a lot of times they use Matthew 17 to 20. What's it say? Matthew 17. I got the King James. Oh, let me pull my Matthew what? 17. 17. 17. 17. Matthew 15. 17. 17. All right. Yeah, that's what I have that one on here, actually. That's close. That's over there. That's almost exactly what Mark 7 says. And I'm wondering if in the other versions, if they... To me, it clarifies the truth of it, the way the scriptures write this do you not understand that whatsoever enters into the mouth goes into the stomach and is cast out in the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth comes out from the heart, and these defile the man. For out of the heart comes forth wicked reasoning, murders, adulteries, warring, thefts, false witnessing, and slanders. These defile the man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile the man. Yep. Thank you. That's why you look at look at the other references of in when in Mark. Go and see how Matthew says it, because they, they parallel a lot of times. And what do you call that, the synapsis or synopsis, something like that. Also in Matthew, okay, back in Matthew chapter 5, at the Sermon on the Mount, didn't Yeshua say, he who teaches any, of the, any to break the least of these commandments will be called least in heaven? So then later in Mark, when he says, if it says, this Jesus said, declaring all foods clean, well, now he's teaching them to break the law. No. No. It's 19, 18, 19, 20, somewhere in there. Do not think that there is, that's all that, 17. Do not think that I have come to destroy the Torah of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to complete, you know, the King James will say fulfill to complete. For truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one till shall by no means pass from the Torah till all be done. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so. So the Messiah was a teacher, right? They call him rabbi, teacher, teacher, rabbi. He's not, te he's not gonna teach people to break the Torah. And that verse in Mark 7 has, has led a lot of people in error. Uh, me, one of, me personally, too. I, I've, I had never even seen that little added part. But I used to use all these other verses to try to justify eating whatever I wanted. You know, praise Jesus and pass the bacon. Well, as long as I pray about it first. But I was convicted. And I was told, get thee to the Greek, Ricky. <laughs> What's it say in Greek? And if in, in Romans 14, had he used this word, a karpatos, instead of this word, koinos, then, then maybe. <laughs> but I, I can't see. I can't. And then th those are just the ones in the New Testament also. Then there's the one that really swayed me over, the one verse that, that won me over, that knocked me off the fence. I mean, just pushed me over the fence. It's Isaiah 65 and 66, the two chapters there, the last two chapters in Isaiah. Uh, 
Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. his return. See that again in Revelation, when you get the great multitude. This is things that are not yet to happen. He didn't do away with the dietary law. He's going to punish those who are eating swine here in the end when he comes back. And that, that's what pushed me over the fence, that no, it never was okay. Um, we have twisted Paul's words, as it, it says in the scriptures, that we would do. Well, if you just go from the scripture, and he says, I change not. Malachi 3. Yeah. For I change not, says Yahweh. Or in Hebrews 13, for Yeshua and Messiah is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is the same, he didn't change. And that would be a contradiction if he did. And the word doesn't, doesn't contradict itself. Okay, let's look at it. Ezekiel 44. Ezekiel 22. And then 44. Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. 
And I've got a reference here to see Leviticus 10.10 10 also, but while we're in Ezekiel, if you want to look up 10.10 10 on your own later, I don't know what it says right off the top of my head. But Ezekiel 44 verse 23 says pretty much the same thing. 44.23. Now they shall they take for their... No, that's... Okay. Verse 23. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. This is talking about the ones who should do the right. We should teach to discern. We should teach discernment between clean and unclean. Um, that we go okay. First Thessalonians four, three through seven. Talking about we're not called to we're called unto cleanliness or something. Timothy Thessalonians. Thessalonians. First Thessalonians four. For Elohim has not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto holiness. Okay, that word uncleanliness there is number one six seven. Okay, and so it's a derivative of this archarthatos. Because it's one six seven. It's it's the same word, it's just different ending on it or something. Or a different tense. Uncleanliness, yeah. The suffix gives it a different 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 word. What's four three say? Okay, four seven, yeah, that was four seven. Um, let's look at some of the other verses. We got, yeah, I got a few minutes. Another one, Acts 15 and 21. Those two chapters. this in context because if you just read verse 20 and it says but write unto them that says okay but we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols okay that that phrase pollution of idols or meat sacrificed to idols it'll say in, in chapter 21 that is a phrase that was it's a Hebrew idiom um, and it was common knowledge in those days that it meant Pigs, shrimp, shellfish, you know, all of Leviticus 11, dot, 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 yada, yada, yada. They didn't want to write, they, they did, instead of writing it all down, it was just a term that meant, that covered it all. And if we take that out of context, but we write into them that they refrain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. I'm going to say that this has to do also with a lot of things that they were doing in the pagan rituals and st stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I've had people tell me, you know, use this verse on, you know, against me. And I'll say, well, when are you and Sally going to get married? You know, these are the same people that are, you know, that one point out one thing, but then in three, two or three, it, anyway, you guys get what I'm saying. That I was a hypocrite. I've been hypocritical. I think at some point in some time we all have. Um, but when we look at what's really said there and who's talking, we go back to, back up to verse 6. And the apostles and the elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up. Did I got the wrong? Am I in the wrong chapter? Mm -hmm. No, it might be in 21 though. Is this talking about the four Gentiles? Where do the four Gentiles come in? Does that mean? All right. Let's keep reading. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago Elohim made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the good news and believe. And Elohim, which knows the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt you, Elohim, to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? 
But we believe that through the grace of the sovereign issue of Messiah, we shall be saved even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders Elohim had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And Okay, here we go. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon had declared how Elohim at first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And that's Jeremiah 16, 19 through 21 there. And to, to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David which has fallen down and I will again I will build again the ruins thereof and I will set it up that the residue of, of men might seek after Yahweh and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called says Yahweh who doeth all these things known unto Elohim are all his works from the beginning of the world wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to Elohim, but that we write unto them that they abstain from the pollutions of idols and from fornications and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time had in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. All right. Let's look at that phrase, polluted by idols, and go over to Acts 21 now. This is one of them. the tribes that are written on the gates of the city. Which gate are you entering in? Um, okay. All that being said, let's look at Colossians 2.16. Okay. Colossians 2.16. This is another one that I've had tried to use against me, that I've used against
says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or the new moon or the Sabbath days. Let, okay, so let no man judge you in respect of what you eat for keeping it. Okay, I've gotten more judgment by trying to not keep it or by trying to not eat it. Or I've been <laughs> having friends and family, I get more judgment by trying to. So uh, I think it's talking to us. Let not men... Let no man therefore judge you in me or in drink or in respect of a holy day. Okay, because we keep the Sabbath. So one day. Or, or we keep tabernacle. We keep Passover. I was, I was telling someone that just last night that I didn't know any kind of persecution while I was a Christian. Uh, but whenever I started doing this, I got persecuted from people I never thought I would. You know. Okay. Verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come. Okay, it's a foreshadow of things to come. The, the feast, the, the Sabbath. But the body, where's it at? Okay, there it is. But the body of Messiah. Let no one judge you, but the body of Messiah. If you're reading along in your King James here, it says the body is of Messiah. If you look real close, that word is, is in italics. And if, you, if y'all know what that means in the King James Bible, words that are in italics aren't there. You can take them out. You can read it without it. They were added by the translators to make it flow, to be more poetic. But this word is is not there, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body of Messiah. Okay, not the body is of Messiah, but the body of Messiah. Let no one judge you but, but us. It doesn't matter what they think of us if we want to keep tabernacle. And <laughs> what is that? There's a scripture somewhere where it talks about that um, that we don't have the right to judge them out there. That's Elohim's job. But it, we are to judge each other. It starts at the church, right? Um, it, 1 Corinthians 5, I think it is. But if any of you who call yourself brethren, any of them who call themselves brethren, this, that, and the other, no, we're not to even eat with them. Is that the one you're talking about? Oh, let's see. First Corinthians 5. Of what? First Corinthians 5. Of 12. Is that the one? That's the one. That's the one. But right, it starts in the house. It starts in, in his, you know, in, at home. Anybody else got anything they want to add? We're running out of time, and I can get on another rabbit track, you know. But oh, let's go to Ephesians five. All right, okay. Second Corinthians six seventeen, I think. I think it is. Second Corinthians six seventeen. Therefore come out from among them and be separate, says Yahweh. And do not touch what is unclean. Do not touch the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The word there, unclean, 169, I think it is. Can we check? I'll, uh, I'll look for it. I can check. Yeah, it's not a, I, I, it's it's just, I bet you it's, it's going to be the archive. Yeah. Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. It's number 169. Well, it actually starts in verse 16 there. It says, And what agreement has the temple of Elohim with, with idols? For you are the temple of the living Elohim. As Elohim has said, I will... Okay, so as Elohim has said, this is written. All this is the Father speaking. He's quoting from Exodus 29, I think, or Zechariah 6, or even Leviticus 7. He says, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says Yahweh, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says Yahweh Almighty. If we want to live in the kingdom, 
we got to follow the kingdom's rule. We got to live. If we want to be in the commonwealth, we got to live by those, those laws of that, the laws of the land. You know, as long as you live in my house, you follow my rules. Yeah. Anything else? Well, that's about all the time we have for now. I hope you guys all kept notes because I'm sure that Jordan is going to quiz you all next week. So if we, well, we should close with a word of prayer. Um, Mike, will you say a word of prayer? Yeah. And close us out and bless the food. A lot of y'all waiting to come to your your son, Yeshua, Messiah. Thank you for this time when we come together and study your word, Father. And I ask that you add it to our hearts that we can share it and defend, as Rick said, defend what we believe. Uh, Father, as we come to the time of fellowship and food, I pray that you bless our time, bless the food in the hands that are provided. Uh, prepare it. Father, again, we love you. Uh, we thank you for your Sabbath. Uh, that we can come together again, brothers and sisters, and worship you. Uh, Father, be with us all we do today, and uh, know that we love you. We love your Son, and in his name, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen.